So, sort of looking back at the, the partner marketing services that we provided you last year, and so sort of taking a look back at that and seeing how that, you know, what have we learned from that? What have we learned from last year? And how does that influence where we go next? How does that evolve, has it evolve, evolve what we do? Um, and a lot of you guys, you know, you make use of things like this, our white label marketing services, and these, these tend to go down really well. They're available on our portal, and you can add your, your own branding to them, and you can add you know, contact information to that. Some of you don't use this as it is, which is fine. We provide you all the raw information and the imagery. You have your own marketing teams, and you, know, you either use our stuff, or maybe we help you move along with the stuff that you have. And while there's always a need for those kind of traditional you know, product sheets and brochures and all those sorts of things that you'll be familiar with from us and, and from others, um, we've worked really hard, especially over the last year, to sort of evolve, evolve that offering. And I think probably the best example of that was our campaign in box initiative um, that we launched early last year. And these were kind of like dedicated boxes of, of content. Uh, and they contained all sorts of things from infographics, uh, white papers, case studies, email marketing templates, all of these sorts of things that you can use to run sort of four, six, eight week campaigns on a particular topic or a particular market vertical that sort of spoke to the, the needs, the challenges, the pain points of each particular market. It was great to see some of you guys using these. I mean, a lot of the guys in the marketing team, we, we follow some of your partners on LinkedIn and there's definitely some high fives around the office when we see you guys making use of some of this stuff, which is, which is absolutely great. And we want to do more of that, and we're going to do more of that. The key bit for us as we move forward is that everything we build from a white label marketing perspective, we build for discovery. Um, and probably the best way, and the most relevant way, and the most recent way to explain it is with things like PST and Switch Off. Um, I mean, I, I don't know the rest of you, I work in this industry, but the PST and Switch Off just sounds like the dullest topic I would not want to talk about at all. And the PST and switch off means something to us because we work in this industry and whether you know you open the latest edition of comms dealer, comms business, kind of pick your poison um, and you'll see some piece of content about the PST and switch off and that's fine for us. But what we mustn't do is assume that this is terminology that the customer, that resonates with the customer. It isn't. We don't necessarily speak the same language that the customer speaks. So if you're going to deliver a piece of content around the PST and switch off as an example, is that going to be, let me talk to you about the PST and switch off? You're going to start with an acronym that they probably don't understand and, and why should they? And you're going to end with switch off with this like negative, something's going away, I'm losing something. Or actually, should you frame it along the lines of, did you know the phone lines are going digital? Like, we need to completely reframe the message so that we speak to customers in a language that, that resonates with them. And we spend a lot of time doing things like you know, Google keyword research. We have a whole load of other tools to ensure that you know, we build the content we create for you guys based around the search intent of your customers. So we look at particular markets, um, we look at the pain points of those, whether that's you know, education um, and sort of the needs for sort of budgetary control, whether that's you know, financial services and the needs they have around compliance and call recording, whether it's logistics, whatever it might be. We spend a lot of time looking at these markets, looking at user personas, and looking for the stuff that they search for, looking for the names that they give to the problems that they're trying to solve or they're trying to identify. And then we create content for you guys that guides those customers through the journey. You know, so whether that's kind of that awareness, consideration, decision stage, right the way through, to really try and help you guys sort of maximize uh, the likelihood of sales success. And we're gonna create lots more of that content. Now, one of the things that really helps my team is understanding what you guys use, what you make use of, and, and those of you that use our, our white label marketing services, you'll be familiar with going to the partner portal and seeing a, a bank of stuff available there that you guys can download and, and make use of as you wish. And one of the great things with that is that we get quite a lot of analytics that sit off the back of it that tells us, without us needing to kind of hassle you, and you know, I'd love to do things like run surveys and ask you guys, you know, what do you need, what would you really like to see from us, and we'll do stuff like that. But equally, we need to get some of these answers without hassling you because you're busy and you know, everything around sort of software and UCAS and, and CPAS, that's everything to us, but it's not everything to you. It's one of a suite of things that you sell from you know, different telecom services to connectivity to mobile to cybersecurity and, and whatever else it might be. Last year, you guys downloaded around <coughs> 6,000 assets from our partner portal. And the great thing about that is it's a really great big data set. 
When we get data sets like that, we can start to analyze them and sort of see what it is that you guys make use of. Because if we can see what it is that you guys download and, 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 and are using and you value, we'll double down our efforts on those sorts of things and we'll do more of that. So what did last year look like? Well, it looked a little bit like that. Um, and we, break, we kind of break it down into sort of three areas. So sort of content and campaigns, so that's the marketing stuff that we give you guys that you put in front of your customers. And at the other end, we've got sales enablement, which is really the internal marketing we give you. It's the stuff we give you that you hand out to your salespeople and your salespeople use and drive those conversations. And then we've kind of got video and sort of media in the middle. Um, so content I've just spoken about for the last few minutes now, and, and we don't really need to kind of go back into that. And while that's kind of the smaller of the three slices, it's actually the fastest growing. And we know we need to do a lot more with content. A, we have a new platform coming down the line, which is obviously part of the reason why you're all here um, today. Um, but also, you know, there's new customer markets like the PSTN switch off. And this is the fastest, fastest growing segment of, of the stuff that we see you guys downloading. The, mid, the middle area, video guides, is quite an interesting one for us, actually. Now, most of the video content that you download from us is actually provided by our great training team, and most of you will know them through the Southwest Switch Academy. You know, they know our product really, really well. Um, they know you guys well, they know the needs of your customers really well. And, and they're not just great trainers, they're great product evangelists. And a lot of the stuff they've provided to you guys are kind of, they're kind of like light, sort of techie overviews. You know, it's kind of their how-to configuration admin, a screen record with a voiceover. And you guys make great use of that. Um, um, we're going to commit to doing more of that stuff for you as well. But we think we can do better. And we think we need to do better. And video is really, really important. And video is important for one simple reason. We're all a bit lazy. Um, you know, if I can watch a video that tells me or informs me how to do something or, or teaches me about something, I'm far more likely to watch a video than I am to read a piece of content. And with a new platform coming down the line, new customer markets, you know, we want to give you sales-ready video that you can use. But we don't just want to do things like screen records. We think we can deliver something that's way, way more immersive. And that's why in the last six months we've hired designers with a background in animation specifically to deliver these rich video experiences as part of our partner marketing toolkit. It's a bit difficult to explain without showing you, but actually you're going to get to see some of that firsthand um, in our main here presentation today. So when you're looking at some of that stuff, you know, some of this stuff is going to be finding its way and flowing its way through to what we give you to use on, on your websites or actually stuff you might send a customer. And we're going to do more of those sorts of things. And then the final area is sales enablement. And this is the one that's actually surprised us most when we look at the data. And we like <coughs> the data and being surprised and it telling us something different to what we expected. So this is the stuff that you guys use internally. We build for you and you use it internally. And it falls into two, two main areas, kind of short form and long form. And the best example of the short form stuff are things like our battle cards. And these are things that we, you know, we give you guys for like your outbound SDRs to use when they're on the phone and they're talking to a prospect. And when we kind of conceptualise these, the sort of the brief that we worked to was, I need a piece of information that I can refer to while I'm on the phone to a customer. So if I've got two minutes on the phone with somebody, I'm going straight to that red box in the middle. And if I've got five minutes, I'm going to lean over to the right. <coughs> and we built into that comparisons to our competitors. And we've all got, you know, we have, what we don't want to do is, is, is kind of sit there and sort of bash the competition. Actually, we need to acknowledge the strengths and the weaknesses of, of the competition. And there are things that our competitors do really, really well, and we need to acknowledge those. And more to the point, you need to acknowledge those. Um, because we know a lot of, you know, from speaking to a lot of partners, that a lot of those kind of initial outbound guys, they are more junior salespeople, right? They're not as savvy and they're not as experienced as some of your more seasoned sort of say people and, and, and BDMs. And so actually, you've got less time to train those guys. So if you can give them information that they can sell against another, another product and talk confidently and quickly about competing solutions, it builds that credibility up and it's gonna push, it's gonna, it's much more likely um, that the customer will feel as comforted and, and feel confident that the information that you're giving them, that they, you, know, you know what you're talking about. Um, and these are working really, really well for us, and we're going to do more of those sorts of things as well. The other area um, that's really, really taken us by storm has been our long form content. And these are mainly sort of in the form of our ebooks and e guides. We've done a few of these now. We've done about three or four of these. We do sort of an annual report, which, which Matt mentioned you guys have a copy of um, today. We've done some things around, um, we've done the UCAS prospecting guide, we've done sort of qualifying opportunities. We've done a few of these, and they've landed really, really well for us. What surprised us is, 
when we kind of conceptualised the idea of these, the idea was to build something to as a lead magnet to find new partners. But they've taken a greater hold within our existing partner base. So we build for you guys first when we do stuff like this now. The information that's contained within these comes from three, three key areas. It's our knowledge, our insights. Now, we're a channel business. We've been around for a fair few years now. We've got some great people in our business that have worked in this industry for a long time. They, they know their onions. Um, and they can speak to that with authority. We've also got, as Matt mentioned earlier, we've got 180,000 users. It's a big data set. And we can look at that and we can see what sort of apps are our customers using, you know, who's, who's got integrations, who's integrating the CRM, you know, what percentage of people are, you know, are using that. And we can look at that data, we can anonymize it, we can draw meaningful, accurate trends from it, and we can play that information back to you. And the final area is independent market research. Like, how are we proving, how are we evidencing the things that we claim and the things that we see in our business? How do we evidence that independently? And last year we teamed up with Statista. Um, they gave us access to a whole wealth of data from Gartner, Forrester, and others. It's about a million data points across 170 industries globally. I think that's right. Um, and what we also have access to with those guys is if there's something that we can't find in a, in a, in a book of more uh, an existing industry report, we can actually go to them with specific requirements and they'll go and harvest that data and about a particular industry or segment or geography or whatever it might be. We put a lot of time and energy into these. Um, because we know it's worth doing. If we didn't think these things were good, we, we wouldn't do them, we'd go and do something else. Um, our latest one, which is our, our 2023 industry report, as Matt said, you guys have had hard copies of today. I'd encourage you to look at it. I'd encourage you to take it back into your business, discuss it with your colleagues and your peers. How does what we're seeing and what we're saying match with what you see in your business? The final bit to note on content before we move on is when we create new content for you guys, and you know, the things that we put on the partner portal and so on, um, we typically tell you through this, which is our kind of monthly marketing newsletter, which we call the Switch. We started this about 18 months ago, and it's once a month email that we ping out to you guys that just contains the key information for the month. Just make sure that you don't miss new stuff when we make it available. We kind of started it sort of from a standing start, sort of 18, 20 odd months ago, with kind of a handful of subscribers. About 2,000 people get this every month now. So if you're not signed up, I'd encourage you to do that. It's that one touch point a month that ensures you don't miss anything. And actually, if you look on the outside back cover of your ebooks, there's a QR code. You can just scan that. Super simple, um, and you'll get very right, next one. I wanted to move on to the second topic, which is our partner program, which is what are the benefits that we're, that we're thinking about that can really add value and can drive value into, into our partners. And this is, this is kind of our growth to you guys, right? So, you know, we had sort of 37 partners in 2019, we're up to about 457 ish at the end of, of last year, there or thereabouts. That's been quite a steep, a steep growth curve. To speak to Matt's point, the important thing to note here is that we don't expect that to continue. You know, we, we look for quality partners, we look for the, the guys in this room, right? You guys are, you know, you're here because you're invested in what we're doing. Right, and you see the value in what we're doing for you. And we want to create, we want to do more around supporting what we already have. Right? And so as, more, as, as new partners come in on a, on a curve that we, we don't anticipate to be as aggressive as that at all, you know, how can we support you guys and give you guys more so that you can differentiate? And we don't have a, we've never had a partner tiering program, and it's a fairly common thing in our industry. And so we're at that point where we need to address it. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to do it the same way that everybody else does it. So we spent a lot of time looking at how other vendors operate channel uh, partners or tiering programs inside our industry and outside our industry. And we've thought about how we can add value and do things a little bit different, and we've come up with something that we think is really, really great. We're breaking out our channel partners into three key areas, and this is how they break out. And this is not at all groundbreaking. This is pretty standard three tiers. Like, you will see this in lots of other industries and lots of other, other vendors. And this is how we'll break out all of our partners. So kind of our sort of foundation level channel partners when you get to 50 seats. And 50 seats is a nice number because, you know, it's that, you know you've, you've, you've had good experience with us at that point, right? You've gone through Tokus Academy, you've placed some orders, you've know, spoken to a few different teams within the business, and, you know, you've kind of, you know, you, you found your feet with it. And, and at the end of the day, you know, if you've got 50 seats on the platform, there's no reason why you can't have 500 seats on the platform. 
And I moved here, you get to five, uh, uh, 500 seats, you become a platinum partner, and at 1500 you'll be one of our top tier carbon partners. And that's how we're breaking out sort of the, three, the three cohorts. And at each level, we'll give you things like sort of a digital partner media kit that you guys can use in any way you see fit. If you want to use that on you know, your website, on literature, however you want to do it. And those partners that fall into our platinum and carbon partners will get physical kits as well. So we'll give you, you know, something that you can use, that you can put up in your office in a, in a meeting room, just to kind of you know, help add that sort of confidence and, and credibility um, when you're talking to customers. Again, there's nothing that is absolutely groundbreaking at all. We started thinking about what could we do that would be a little bit different. How could we help you? How could we add value to you, even if it actually doesn't relate back to what we do and what we sell? And we started speaking to some other businesses, some other software businesses, about would they like to get involved in a partner initiative? Could we, could we broker some kind of agreement to deliver value to our customers? And we're enacting three partnerships today with other businesses that are going to factor as part of our partner program. The first of these, and the one as a marketer that I'm most excited about, is that we're partnering with Lead Forensics. Lead Forensics are a great software business. They're a really big software business. Those of you who don't know who these guys are, they basically have a, a great software platform that reverse IP tracks the visitors to your website, so you install a little bit of code on your website, and it starts tracking the people who visit your site, they enrich that data, and then they feed it back into the top of your sales funnel. You can create lots of meaningful reports about that. I want to know, you know, I want to report on the people that visit my UCAS page. I want a report on the people that visit my compliant page. I want to know all these visitors, but you know, I focus on the SME market. So actually, I'm not interested in any company that has over 100 users because that smaller business is my focus, or maybe it's the other end of the scale. I don't actually want to have a conversation with somebody unless they've got, you know, 250 staff. And you can create these reports and feed them back into the top of your sales funnel. We're in a year, guys, where a lot of marketing budgets have been <coughs> restrained, and, and actually there's huge value in, in kind of doubling down on what you already have. And the problem with inbound is that the customer always has to take action. Right? You can have a great website, you can have all the content there, you can have everything beautifully laid out, absolutely fine, but at the end of the day, somebody who's visiting your website for the first time, they've got to pick up the phone. They've got to fill out that contact form. They've got to click on that live chat button. However easy you make it for them, they've still got to take the action. And you, at the moment, unless you're using a tool like that, you've got no idea how much you're leaving on the table, Lead Forensics will put that back into the top of your sales funnel. So if you think about how that relates to partner marketing, if you get a report like that from Lead Forensics about the people that have visited your sort of telephony sections of your website, you can feed that straight back into an outbound SDR team, guys who've got their battle cards all set up, ready to make their calls, and ready to have those kind of guided discussions around how you can get them back into the top of the sales funnel. We spent a lot of time chatting with Lead Forensics about how we could, you know, broker a deal with those guys to add some, some discounted value back into you. And actually, we've got Dan and James from Lead Forensics up here somewhere. Where are you guys? I think there we go. Um, Dan and James are here from Lead Forensics. Well, I mean, have a chat with them about their platform over coffee. Um, you know, they're re really great to have their support today. Um, they've agreed um, with us that we will, um, we will offer a 10% discount off their standard pricing for our mid-tier platinum partners and 15% for our top-tier carbon partners. And we'll do that through a referral and we'll hand it over to those guys and, and deal, with them, deal with them directly. That's a great tool for sort of improving and kind of getting those customers that you've lost back into the top of the sales funnel. The second partnership is with Breathe HR. It has absolutely nothing to do with what we do. But Breathe is a great British business. They're a software business, they've been around for 10 years, they look after about 15, 20,000 SMEs in the UK. They've got a brilliant online platform for sort of managing your annual leave, you know, sickness, performance reviews, all of those sorts of things. We're a Breathe customer. We've been using this product for three years. It's great. And it's that reason why we thought, actually, this is really, really good for us. We love this product. This would be really good for our partners. So we had a conversation with those guys, we had an agreement with them, and absolutely we could. So we've negotiated the same 10% discount for, for platinum partners and 15% for our top tier carbon partners. And the final partner that we're announcing today is Tapney. So Tapney has a great sort of sustainable business card model. We have these kind of reusable, sustainable business cards that actually each one of those cost the price of about a couple of packs of business cards. Super, super simple, super cheap. And actually a really nice experience, kind of tapping a business card rather than handing over a, a piece of card that kind of gets lost in the bottom of someone's bag. The great thing is they've got a software platform that sits behind it that supports things like um, SSO through Microsoft and Google, so actually you can centralise the deployment of all that stuff. And 
if you tap a business card on a, on a contact at an event, they can reverse share their contact <coughs> information for you. That can go straight to your CRM. So that can go straight into HubSpot, straight to Salesforce, go straight to Slack, loads of different platforms that they sync with, which is great for you because it reduces the salesperson admin, but also makes sure that you hold the data, you own the data, the business owns the data, not the salesperson. So that's, there we go, that's how it shapes up. So we get 15%, uh, sorry, 10% 15%, for Platinum and Carbon, Tapmi are offering 20% off their platform for life, so it's a slightly different offer with those guys. I want to bring more companies into this. I don't think anyone else is doing what we're doing here, and I want to bring more, and these things are actually way more complicated to agree and to broker than certainly I expected um, when we kind of started with this idea, but we're really glad, glad to have three great partners to kick off our pilot program. There's one other thing before I finish. Um, that I wanted to announce, and it's, it's relevant to our platinum partners. And that is for the first time, we're gonna be introducing access to marketing development funds. Now we've thought long and hard about how we do this, and we don't really wanna do it the same way that everybody else does it. We wanna do it a little bit differently, like most of the things that we wanna do. The problem with MDF is it's boring, it's transactional, you fill out a form, someone approves it, you know, it supplements existing marketing budget. <coughs> we think we can be better than that, and we think together we can be better at that. So, actually, we don't want MDF to start with you filling out the form. We want it to start with a conversation, right? <coughs> what ideas do you have? What is it that you want to do? Have a conversation with your BDM and with me, or someone in my team. We don't want to do things like sponsor stands at trade shows or pay for printed marketing material. What we want to do is we want stuff that sits outside of that. Stuff that sits outside of your standardized marketing budget. If you've got a crazy, ridiculous idea for something that you want to try, something that you want to do, and it's something that you believe in, talk to us about it. And if it's something we believe in as well, and if you want to take that risk, then we want to share that risk with you, and we'll split it down the middle. So. We want to be prescriptive when we put these things together, but we don't want to be constrained at the front end. We want to be very open and have lots of conversations with you guys around the sorts of things that we'd want to do. Um, and we want to have that dialogue with you guys and, and, and we will share that risk with you. 